Today, we'll be writing quadratic equations. We'll do it first if you're given a point, x, y, and a vertex. And in that case, you use vertex form. Also, if you're given x-intercepts and any point, then you can use intercept form. But if you're given three points, you can write and solve a three-by-three three system. Example one, write an equation of a parabola in vertex form if the vertex is negative, si negative 2, 6, and it passes through negative 1, 3. So since we know the vertex and one point, we're going to use vertex form. And believe it or not, we're almost done because we know the vertex. So this is our HK. So Y equals A, X, remember you go opposite of sign here, so that's plus two squared, and you keep the sign the same here. So really, the only thing we need is A. So what we're gonna do is plug in everything we know and solve for A. So this is our X, this is our Y. So we plug three in for Y, we don't know A. X is negative one, H opposite of sign, and K same sign. So now we're looking at three A one squared plus six. So one squared is one, so that's just A plus six. Subtract 6 from both sides, and A equals negative 3. So now we have our answer. Y equals negative 3, X plus 2 squared plus 6. Final answer. Example 2. Before we go into example 2, I want to make sure you understand intercept form. It's all in the name, intercept. So if you know the intercepts, the x-intercepts, you can plug them in to the equation. Just make sure you go opposite of the sign on both of them. Example two. I've given you a few little steps and we'll talk about those. Write the equation in standard form if it has an x if it has x intercepts negative two zero and four zero and passes through the point negative one ten. So because we're starting uh, with intercepts, we're gonna start with intercept form. So remember I started the lesson by showing you what intercept form is. And guess what? We are almost there that fast. <laughs> We're going to know everything again except for A. So we're going to um, plug in our intercepts opposite of the sign. So we have Y equals A, X opposite. So that's plus 2 opposite. So that's going to be minus 4. And now, oh, I forgot to plug in my x and y. And we have x in two spots. Notice that. So my x, y is here. I'm going to plug 10 in for y and negative 1 in for both of the x's. And it's going to get really easy because we know everything except for a. So 10 equals negative 5a, and a equals negative 2. So we're ready to write the equation. y equals negative 2, that's my a, x opposite of sine, that's plus 2, opposite of sine, that's minus 4. 
And notice when we write these equations, we always leave the equation with the X's and Y's intact. The beauty of a function is that you can plug in X, solve for Y. You can plug in Y, solve for X. Or you can just graph it and make predictions from the graph. Oops, we're not done. This asks for us to write the equation in standard form. So we need to think back. Standard form is the one that says y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we need to make this equation look like this. So I need to recall how to FOIL. <laughs> Hopefully you remember that from algebra, but I'll refresh your memory. FOIL, it stands for first, outer, inner, last. So we do the FOIL first, leave the negative two out there. First is x squared, outer is negative four x, inner is plus two x, and last is a negative eight. I hope that's um, coming back <laughs> and you can remember that. So I'm going to simplify inside the parentheses first, combining my like terms. Now I'll distribute the negative 2. And so here we have standard form. And soon you'll appreciate the beauty of standard form because you can see your A, your B, and your C, and that's gonna be important to us soon. Example three. This is where all the math is gonna to start to come together. In algebra one, you just get bits and pieces and get your skills together. In algebra two, you'll start to see how to put the things together and see the big picture. So these are the heights of a thrown baseball after x seconds. First of all, I'd like for you to write a quadratic equation based on these points. And then second, I'd like for you to find the height of the baseball after five seconds. So to write the equation of a parabola, you only need three points. I say, pick the smallest. <laughs> However, it'll work out no matter which ones you pick. I just think smaller numbers are easiest. So I'm going to pick this one, this one, and definitely that one. And no matter what, I'm always going to pick a point that has a zero. And you'll see why in just a moment. So for the point zero six. When I plug it into standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, I'm going to plug in all the x's are 0, and all the y's, well, it's just one y, is 6. So I get 6 equals a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. So now I have 6 equals 0 plus 0 plus C. Yes! So C equals 6. So that worked out. I've already solved for one of my variables even before I set up all my equations. So that's beautiful, and that's going to cut back on a lot of the work. So now for my next X and Y, I'm going to do the same thing in standard form ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'm going to plug y is 22, x is 2, and simplify that equation, 4a plus 2b plus c. And I'm a little funny. I always like for... <laughs> For it to be in this order so I'm just flipping the equation around and then last but not least 
Our third point is 6-6. Six, six. Why did I write that? Our third point is 6-6. Six, six. So I'm plugging in x is 6 and y is 6. So 6 equals a times 6 squared plus b times 6 plus c. And you really want to stay organized with these problems. And again, I like for my equations to be turned this way. You don't have to do that. Okay, so now here are my three equations and my three variables. But like I said, we really lucked out that we already know what C is. So we can solve by substitution. I already have one variable by itself, and I'm going to plug in 6 for both of the C's here. So I have 4A plus 2B plus 6 equals 22. And that simplifies to 4A plus 2B equals 16. And you know me, I'm all automatically going to divide by 2. I like to get the numbers as low as possible whenever it's possible. Smaller numbers, I just feel are easy, easier. <laughs> so now um, I'm going to plug my C is 6 in over here for the C. So I got 36A plus 6B plus 6 equals 6. Will you look at there? That's a 0. So 36A plus 6B equals 0. And automatically, you know I'm going to divide everything by 6 just to make the numbers smaller. Makes my life easier. So now I have a new system with only two variables and two equations. So I'm just going to multiply this one by negative 1. So I'm going to get negative 6a minus b equals 0. And I get negative 4a equals 8. And a equals negative 2. Now let's get focused. What am I looking for now? I know A, I know C, I just need to find B. So I can plug it into this equation, or I could have went into that equation. Either one didn't matter. So six times negative two plus B equals zero. Negative 12 plus B equals zero. So B equals 12. And I've solved my system. But now, remember, we were trying to find the equation of the parabola. We know A, B, and C. Those are the coefficients from standard form. Remember standard form, AX squared plus BX plus C. And what we did is solve for the A, B, and C. Now, it was quite a journey to get there. That's what part A asked for, the parabola. And lastly, part B says, what's the height of the ball after five seconds? Well, if we go all the way back up, we'll see that Y is for height and X is for seconds. So I'm going to plug in 5 for X. So y equals negative 2, 5 squared, plus 12 times 5, plus 6. And y equals negative 2 times 50. Nope, that's 25. Got ahead of myself. Plus 60 plus 6 is negative 50, plus 60 plus 6. Order of operations, 10 and 6 is 16. 16 what? What did Y represent? Represented the height in feet. So, 
A good student always answers with a sentence. After five seconds, The ball will be 16 feet high. And you're going to realize that quadratics are used for all types of throwing, projectiles, and all types of stuff. Uh, you're going to see that.